discussion later. Okay, so good afternoon again. So this is uh, Planetary and Atmospheric Science. This is the first lecture wherein we're going to have an overview or a survey of the solar system. Okay, so this some of the uh, information here might, excuse me, might be um, might be old to you, or you might you know, already know this stuff. So I hope uh, there will be some I don't know things that would be new to you, or will be able to appreciate later. But this is just an overview of what are we going to study in this class. So this includes a survey of the solar system, what is uh, the definition of a planet, as well as some of the planetary properties uh, that will be of interest in this class. Okay, uh, so this will be a, so we are only left with a few, uh, about eight weeks of, I don't know, of uh, content delivery. So I hope you will be able to, you know, uh, cover as much uh, as much topic as we can. See you again. Okay, so let's start. So the age of planetary exploration started with this photo. So can anyone name this photo? Anyone? Meron bang makakapagsabi kung ano tong picture na to? Uh, you don't have to raise your hands, no? If you um, try to, ano, no? Konti lang naman tayo. So you can just uh, turn on your your microphone and just speak, okay? Sige, uh, Edgar, you want to say something? Edgar ba yun o si Paul? Paul? Sir, uh, good afternoon po. Si Paul po. Yes. Sir, uh, parang moon. I okay. think moon po ata siya. Yeah, it looks like the moon, no? no but it's not, yes, does it doesn't look like the, you know, the usual moon that we see uh, through our telescopes, no? Kasi, you know, pag nakita man natin yung moon, usually, it's basically the same face of the moon every time. So it doesn't really, you know, new to us to see the moon up close in with that, with that kind of view using our telescope, no? So actually, this picture is the first close-up photograph of the far side of the moon. And this was taken uh, on October 7, 1959, okay, during a flyby by Luna 3 spacecraft by then the USSR or the Soviet Union, okay? So as you will notice that even in 1959, you can already, you know, get some information with regards to, for example, our moon. Okay, so this picture actually started the age of planetary exploration, wherein we, you know, we we uh, launched spacecrafts to visit other worlds, satellites, or even some of the most uh, more exotic uh, 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 bodies in the solar system. And as you will notice that after 50 years, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter took this photograph of the far side of the moon. Okay, so you will notice that uh, the, it's amazing to think that 50 years worth of technology improvement, no? Enabled us to see the side of the moon in much detail, wherein we could not really see this kind, this, uh, this view from the perspective of observers that is uh, on uh, on Earth, okay? Because we cannot we can uh, we cannot see the side of the moon uh, by just losing our telescope on ground. And from this, and over the next three decades, uh, various spacecrafts visited all the eight known giant planets of the solar system, including our own, where they have returned data, pictures, samples etc. concerning the planets, even the rings, and even the moons. In fact, spacecraft images of many objects showed detailed uh, details never suspected from earlier Earth-based pictures. Just like this 
picture now. Okay, so we could never observe this far side of the moon by just using uh, the telescope that is on board or mounted here on Earth. And that with all these pictures, here we can, we can now see the storms of Jupiter and Saturn in great detail. We can also see the Galilean satellites, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. And we can also see an asteroid. This is asteroid uh, 21 Lutetia and comet uh, Churyumov Gerasimenko. And these are these photographs of, a, of this uh, asteroid and this comet are photographs at closest approach, which was shot by the Rosetta spacecraft. Okay, so naging sikat si Rosetta spacecraft no? uh, a few years ago because of this uh, very detailed close-up picture of this comet. We can also see here a close-up image, the first close-up image, a detailed image of the dwarf planet Pluto. And uh, do you know what satellite or spacecraft he would, uh, were able to get this, uh, no, no, this picture? Can anyone tell me or share with us? Naalala nyo ba kung sino kung anong spacecraft yung nakakuha nitong picture na to? Anyone? Naalala nyo pa ba kung anong spacecraft ang ginamit natin dito? Hmm, okay. Voyager, no, no, not Voyager. Close, but not Voyager. Event Horizon. Yeah, it should be it is there. No, huh? Sorry. Sino Event ba? Horizon, sir. Event Horizon. Are you okay. sure? Hindi ko sigurado sa. Very close, ah, very close, okay. <laughs> it's not the Event Horizon because the Event Horizon is actually, you know, the boundary of the black hole, di ba? So na medyo na fix up malang yung mga terms. But this is actually you know, shot by the New Horizons probe. Okay. Uh, it was shot in 2015, no? so very, 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 very fresh pa, no? this picture. About five years old para to picture. Na to. And, this, and this is the most detailed uh, picture of Pluto that we, that we got already. And lastly, no? uh, because of you know, the technological advances that we have developed over the years, we can now imagine ourselves landing and living on the surface of Mars, thanks to the Mars Exploration Rover Spirit, which was which, which took the shot. No? So in this picture or in this shot, this is a I don't know, this is a uh, panoramic shot, a composite shot of uh, the surface of Mars, and this picture was taken during its winter campaign in two thousand six. No? Uh, and as you will notice about uh, this is uh, this this hill is called the husband hill and from the uh, from the rover spirit this about this uh, this uh, hill is about 850 meters away okay so because of those uh, technological advances throughout the years and started with you know uh, with luna 3 taking a picture during a flyby of the far side of the moon, we indeed have come so, uh, have come so far uh, since that you know, first photograph of the far side of the moon. Okay, now let's go to the solar system. So this is the, this is the basic picture of the solar system, which we are all already familiar with now. Okay, here we can see the sun and the eight planets to scale. And as you can deduce, when viewed from afar, if you go into, you know, go far away from, you know, far away from the solar system, the solar system itself, of course, is dominated by the sun. The sun is so huge that it has a luminosity that is 400 million times as large as the total luminosity. So that means reflected plus emitted of Jupiter which is the second brightest object of the solar system, okay? So much of the luminosity is, uh, will actually come from the sun. And that is why 
we are having a hard time uh, detecting planetary systems around uh, around stars. Okay, because of this fact, no, that the the luminosity of this uh, planet, uh, stellar uh, planetary systems around uh, certain stars, is that the the star is so bright, no. Uh, we, uh, the stars are so bright, their, uh, their parent stars are so bright that uh, we can, even if the planets themselves emit light or reflect light from their sun, from their, you know, from their stars, okay, we, can act, we cannot, we barely see them directly. So what we usually do is to detect those, you know, extra solar planet systems or exoplanets, uh, we have to, you know, be creative in, you know, discovering them. Now, uh, aside from the luminosity of the sun, the sun also contained more than 99.8% no, of the known mass of the solar system. Okay, so by, you know, by this measure, the, the our solar system can be actually thought of as the sun plus some debris. Relative to the sun, we are all debris, no, in terms of luminosity, and in terms of in terms of mass, okay. But we can actually describe the solar system by other measures, okay. Wherein the planets are uh, becomes more significant. So, for example, if we're going to talk about angular momentum of the solar system, okay, the sun doesn't contribute to that so much. In fact, more than ninety-eight percent of the angular momentum of the solar system lies in the, I don't know, the revolution or the orbital motion of planets, much of which comes from the, this four big, huge planets, no? Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. No? Moreover, the sun is fundamentally different in terms of the type of body it has from the planets itself, no? So you already know that the sun is actually a ball of plasma, okay? It is a hot ionized gas ball of plasma that is powered by nuclear fusion, uh, nuclear fusion in its core. But uh, on the other hand, the smaller fragments or the smaller debris of the solar system, the smaller bodies, planets, and even the smaller ones, and they are, con they are composed of molecular matter, okay? Some of which, are in a form of solid or so in, in, in we call it, uh, these are in, in, in solid state, okay? Whereas this is uh, in uh, plasma state, the sun is mostly in plasma state. All our planets are in, uh, most of the parts of the solar system are in solid state form, okay? So aside from these planets, okay, uh, this debris, okay, much of the debris this Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Okay, there are other uh, there are other debris that encircles the sun. Okay, uh, and this uh, numerous and varied smaller objects uh, like sa natural satellites like our Moon, Phobos and Deimos of Mars, the Galilean uh, satellite, etc. Okay. We can also know about, you know, the asteroids, the icy comets, and the dwarf planets such as Pluto, Charon, Makemake, uh, and even Ceres. No? So in this semester, our class will mainly focus on these debris. No? Mostly, we will focus ourselves with, you know, the planetary systems or the, 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 the planets themselves, okay, more than the contribution of the sun in the solar system. Because you know, for a fact that this class is planetary science, planetary and atmospheric science. Okay, so as you will notice that this figure shows the orbits of the inner solar system consists, consists, consisting of the four terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Okay, and this is the current orbit of this uh, of this four terrestrial planets, okay? And 
uh, the rest of the solar system today. Okay, so here we can notice that we included Pluto just for comparison of the you know, of the eccentricity or the skewness of Pluto's orbit or the weirdness of orbit's uh, orbit. And also here, you can see that we represented this view uh, because we have to, you know, take the scale of this. Uh, uh, with respect to the uh, orbits of the of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, we can see that uh, the orb orbit of the terrestrial planets is very small compared to that. Okay, so uh, the two different levels of reduction are displayed because of the relative closeness of the four terrestrial planets to the sun and the much larger spacing of the outer solar system that includes the orbit of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and even the Kuiper belt. Okay, so you will notice here that, uh, okay, uh, the axes are measured or are represented in astronomical unit. So you're already familiar with the unit astronomical unit. So this is a distance, a unit of distance that is defined by the distance between the earth and the moon. So if we're going to, you know, if we're going to trace this negative one and positive one here, it will actually coincide with the orbit of the moon. As you will notice that Mars is about 1.5 uh, astronomical units away from the sun. So that means the Mars is 1.5 times farther than Earth is farther from the sun, okay? And you will notice that for Neptune, it's about around uh, 40 to uh, 20 uh, what? Uh, astronomical units. On the left side are simulations now. These are movies. We're in uh, the movies uh, show the variations of the orbits for the past uh, for the past 30 mil, three, uh, 3 million years so this is the current okay this is the current uh, orbit of our of, of the planets now and if you go back in time for 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 a period of 3 million years we notice that we can see some variations already okay So this already uh, one million years ago and 1.5 million years ago, two million years ago, and 2.5 and three million years ago. So you will notice the difference between the, the present orbit and the simulated orbit for the past uh, uh, orbit of the inner planets or the inner solar system three million years ago. And you can also see the aversion of this for the outer planets. So the movie shows, so the movie show variations of, in the orbits over the past three million years now. And these changes are caused by the mutual perturbation among the planets, because you already know that you know, the universal law of gravitation of Newton states that any two bodies with masses will interact with each other through the gravitational force, okay? And though much of the masses are, uh, mass of, much of the gravitational force present in the solar system comes from the sun's gravitational pool, that's, that's the major, you know, that's the major source of gravitational force that enables the, our, our planets to orbit around it. But because of the presence of the other planets, okay, these smaller planets or these planets, Mars, even Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, okay, this actually contributes uh, 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 to the perturbation or to the small changes. And that when those small changes are actually added to the gravitational force by the sun or exerted by the sun, uh, this, uh, small perturbation actually changes the uh, overall orbit of these planets uh, for longer periods of time. And this is demonstrated in the simulation. So we can see it again. 
Okay, so you will notice that uh, there are times that you know the uh, the orientation of the orbit of Mars wobbles through time. Okay. But generally, the I don't know. Generally, the the planets' orbit are stable in a sense that uh, they they tend to stay in their places. Okay, because we, if these are not really stable, you notice that large uh, deviations from the original orbit or the orbit today uh, will be observed. Okay, now let's go to the. Uh, giant and jovian planets okay so let's start with the bigger planets because uh, next to the sun this four giant or jovian planets are the ones contributed to contributing to most of the i don't know most of the mass total mass of the solar system so here the jupiter dominates our planetary system its mass is equivalent to about 300 18 Earth masses, and it exceeds twice that of all other known solar system planets combined. So when you combine all other, the rest of the seven uh, solar uh, planetary uh, planets in the solar system, combined all the masses, okay, uh, Jupiter's mass will still exceed twice of that. Okay, that's how big Jupiter is, or that's how massive Jupiter is. Okay, thus. As a second approximation, uh, the solar system can be viewed as the sun and Jupiter and some of the debris. Okay, so most of the, those debris, quote unquote, uh, are, your plan, are your planets, your, your dwarf planets, your minor planets, etc. Now, you will notice that uh, usually we use the term Jovian right now. To describe these four uh, massive, to these four massive uh, planets, no. So the term Jovian is also now commonly used to study extrasolar planets. Okay, we use these planets to describe extrasolar planets or exoplanets, in short, to describe you know uh, planets that have uh, that have similar size than not Jupiter. Okay, so we use Jovian to to uh, to rel to you know. Uh, to uh, categorize those exoplanets, wherein those planets have similar size as of uh, uh, similar size compared to Jupiter. Now, second, uh, next to Jupiter is your Saturn. Okay? Saturn has a mass of nearly about 100 Earth masses. Saturn is similar to Jupiter because it is mostly made of hydrogen and helium. And each of these planets probably possess heavy elements, uh, heavy element core of mass of about 10, okay, 10 Earth masses. By the way, no, uh, I, I also uh, placed here in this slide a relative size of the Earth uh, compared to these four giant planets, or Jovian planets. And you will notice that the red. You know, the famous red spot of Jupiter, the size of that is very close to the size of the Earth. So this is a very, very huge, I don't know, very, very huge uh, uh, part of the, of the, of the Jovian or the, of, of uh, the surface of Jupiter. Okay. Uh, the Saturn rings, on the other hand, are about 280,000 kilometers wide now. Very, very, uh, very, very wide. No? In fact, no, if we're going to uh, put Earth on this side, okay, the true distance of you know the uh, Moon will be exactly somewhere on the other side of the of the outer rings of the of uh, Saturn. So that means this is enough. So this space is enough to fit the space between the Earth and the Moon. However, while this uh, ring is very thick, no? uh, 282 kilometers wide, uh, the thickness, the lateral thickness of this, uh, of this rings is only about one kilometer. So very, very thin, uh, very thin, uh, very thin uh, ring. No? 
So that's why if you if you ever had a chance to view Saturn in a telescope, there will be times that you know this ring will not be visible. Okay, to you know because of you know certain you know uh, perspective. You no, know? uh, but there will be times that if the uh, the the Saturn is tilted toward the Earth, you will you will now you will uh, begin begin to see these beautiful rings of Saturn. Okay. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn, because of their uh, one, uh, the common thing about them is they are, you know, mostly made up of hydrogen and helium gases. That's why we call them gas giants. On the other hand, the third and fourth largest of the planets, Neptune and Uranus, each having a mass of roughly about one sixth that of the Sun, of Saturn. So this is about one sixth. Of the mass of Saturn, right? It's a, but still huge compared to the rest of the planet, the terrestrial planets. Okay, so Uranus is famous for rotating on its side, the only planet in the solar system that rotates this way. So nakatagilid siya. No? And Neptune is the outermost planet. Okay, in fact, uh, the one unique uh, feature of you know of Neptune is that it has a lot of storms and you will notice it in this picture, okay? So Uranus and Neptune are commonly known or referred to as the ice giants, okay? Although the ices uh, are present in their fluid rather than in the solid form, no? Uh, and uh, most of the total angular momentum of the solar system is carried by this giant planet. Okay. Oh, by the way, no. Uh, all Jovian planets, these four planets, support ring systems, which we're going to talk about more later. No? Okay. They have no solid surface, so they are either gaseous form of hydrogen and helium, or liquid form of you know, uh, you know, ammonia, water, etc., which we're going to talk about as well later. Okay. And they are very large. They are immense in size. And they have multiple moons, no? They have multiple moons, unlike, you know, terrestrial planets. So they have multiple moons, and some say that they are not done discovering the rest of them yet. Okay? So there's still much to discover, even for these this, uh, three, I don't know, these uh, three Jovian planets. Okay, so gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, mostly consist, as I mentioned earlier, hydrogen and helium and some trace gases, while Uranus are a combination of, you know, while they are also abundant in hydrogen and helium, uh, some of them are actually contain you know, astrophysical ices. When you say astrophysical ices, this includes water, ice, uh, ammonia, NH3, and methane, CH4. Okay, so most of their volumes are occupied by relatively lower masses of helium and hydrogen. Okay, now let's go to terrestrial planets. And the mass of the remaining known debris, okay, uh, are less than one-fifth that of the smallest giant planet. So the smallest giant planet is Uranus and Neptune. So the total mass of these four terrestrial planets is less than one-fifth of that planet. So these are relatively much smaller than those earlier set of planets. This debris, this debris consists of all the solid bodies in the solar system. So that's why they're called terrestrial. Their surfaces are solid. Okay. Uh, and despite its small size, it contains a wide variety of objects that are interesting chemically, geolog geologically, dynamically, and in at least one case, biologically here on Earth. Now, hi the hierarchy continues within this group with two large terrestrial planets, Venus and Earth. In fact, sometimes Venus is so uh, similar to Earth, we call Venus 
the evil queen of the earth, no? Okay. Uh, each of these planets have a radius of about 6,000 kilometers and approximately 1 to 0.7 astronomical units from the sun. Okay, so Earth is one astronomical unit. Venus is closer to the sun. It's about 0.7 astronomical units. Okay, and the rest of this debris are Mars and Mercury. So our solar system contains two small terrestrial planets, Mercury and Mars. So Mars has a radius of about 35,000 or 3,500 or 3,500 kilometers and orbiting of about 1.5 astronomical units, as I mentioned earlier. Mercury, on the other hand, has a radius of about 2,500 2, kilometers orbiting at uh, closest to 0.4 astronomical units. Okay, so Mercury is closer to the sun than Mercury is to the Earth. Okay, so in this text, in this in, in this uh, in this context, okay, the word terrestrial is will be used to mean Earth-like, uh, Earth-like uh, planets or related to the planet Earth, um, because sometimes we use terrestrial, the term terrestrial. Uh, in no, no, for other sciences like geology and biology, and we they usually use the term terrestrial uh, to signify uh, to signify a relationship with land masses. But in our case, we are going to use terrestrial uh, in the context of planet Earth itself. So that's why, okay, when we are going to uh, some exoplanets are. Uh, some of the categories of exoplanets, aside from being a Jovian planet, some of them can be categorized as terrestrial planets, similar to our four terrestrial planets. Okay, so just a few, I don't know, just a few uh, items before we move to the next slide. Uh, Mercury is the smallest and closest to the sun. Okay, we already know that. And it has the shortest orbit around the sun, about three Earth months. Venus is the hottest planet about 460 degrees Celsius. And this is because due to the large amounts of carbon dioxide, so uh, global warming is very evident or greenhouse effect is very evident in Venus, okay? Uh, aside from the large amounts of uh, carbon dioxide, okay, the, temp the high temperature, uh, the, high te the, high uh, the high temperature Venus is also is also uh, is also I don't know uh, is also uh, due to the uh, extensive lava flows within the surface through the volcanoes in the surface of Venus. Earth, our own Earth, is known for its water. So as of now, uh, Earth is only the Earth in the solar system that has liquid water in it which is crucial in creating an environment capable of sustaining life. Life as we define what life is now, okay? And Mars, lastly, might have supported life before because there are, you know, traces of, uh, you know, what, uh, bodies of water that have dried up over the years. Uh, some say that around 3.7 billion years ago, the planet had a watery surface. Okay, and maybe a moist, a moist atmosphere, just like ours. However, uh, some say that because of the weak magnetic field of Mars, so most of the Martian atmosphere were swept away by solar wind. Okay, uh, that's uh, no no, uh, giving I don't know, giving uh, so that uh, so. That uh, some theorize that you know, that's because why you know, Mars were what well, uh, Mars is and know is left to dry up in for the past several billion years now. So some people say that it, the, um, uh, Mars will be a model. Uh, 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 Earth will uh, will become some kind uh, something like Mars if the Earth's magnetosphere or Earth's geomagnetic field becomes weak and weak enough to, I don't know, uh, to, to remove or to, to 
to diminish that protection from the solar beam. And some people also say that because of the current warming, because of the greenhouse effect that is currently happening on Earth. By the way, greenhouse effect and global warming are generally uh, no, no, uh, natural occurrences. No? Uh, uh, some just people say right now that you know, the, the global warming that we are currently uh, experiencing is not natural. Some say they true. Uh, so, you know, you already know the story. And if that uh, worsens, we might become Venus in the future. So anyway, so speaking of the terrestrial planets, these terrestrial planets have the atmospheres, and these are some of this is the summary of the you know, uh, contents of the atmosphere of these four terrestrial planets. So Mercury uh, uh, is a very thin atmosphere. The pressure at the surface about 10 to the negative 14 at atmosphere. No? So very small, but there's still atmosphere on Mercury. Pressure in Venus about 90 atmospheric pressure. So that's 90 times the atmospheric pressure that we're currently experiencing right now at the surface of the Earth. Mars has a thin atmosphere as well, about 0 0.006 atmospheric pressure. Okay. So Venus and Mars, much of the I don't know, atmospheric composition, uh, sorry, the atmospheric composition and density of these terrestrial planets vary widely. Okay, with Mercury, as I mentioned before, it's exceedingly thin. Okay, uh, the more massive terrestrial planets, Venus and Earth, okay, can contain um, a lot of atmospheres. Okay, mainly due to you know the the you know uh, because of gravitational pull, the Earth and Venus can you know hold more uh, more uh, atmospheric constituents than Mercury and Mars. Okay, uh, now Earth and Mercury have an internally generated magnetic field, which suggests that Mer Mars, as I mentioned before possess one in the distant past, but if, uh, for some reason, they say that uh, the grav uh, gravitational field, or sorry, the uh, uh, inert or the you know, internal magnetic field of Mars uh, suddenly, uh, suddenly decreased or erased. No? So if we're going to, because as I mentioned before, no, Kanina, uh, this, uh, these terrestrial planets are have solid surfaces. So the question is now, what is it like in these planets? No? So some people have shown this figure uh, showing what is it like on Earth. Of course, on Earth, we already, Mars, we already seen that. Venus, there are attempts to, you know, place probes on the surface, but because of the immense atmospheric pressure, 90 times that of the Earth, okay, those, you know, those landers usually do not last long. Sometimes a few, a few minutes, they're all dead already. Okay, so these are just uh, artists, uh, these two are just artist conception of what it is like uh, living in Mercury and Venus. Okay, next. Okay, uh, so this is your solar system now. So we already talked about, you know, the major parts, the planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now let's talk about asteroids. So asteroids, usually we call them minor planets, all have radii or radius of less than 500 kilometers and are found primarily, so most of the asteroids are found in the asteroid belt orbiting between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. And they are said to be the, rem the remnants of the solar system's formation. So in the coming weeks, we're going to talk about, you know, learn more about how solar system has been formed. And then from the, and then they say they have the asteroid belt or the asteroids that is currently orbiting around the sun are, you know, leftovers of those, uh, leftovers of the planet formation. So here are the uh, four most popular and the largest 
of these uh, minor planets. Okay, so the relative size are not to scale. No, so these are Serca, these are Ceres. Oh, sorry, this should be Ceres, Vesta, Pallas, or Pallas, and Juno. Okay, now at the outermost part of the solar system, we have the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a thick disk of ice and rock. Okay, so this is mostly composed of ice because of, you know, the, the, by virtue of their distance away from the sun. So they're very far from the sun that, you know, solar radiation uh, is not enough to melt those ice. Okay, and this, uh, you know, this, these things are found beyond the orbit of Neptune. And usually, or sometimes we call this also home for some asteroids. Okay, and the dwarf planets. Okay, so two of the largest members of the Kuiper Belt have been cited are Aries. Okay, this is a uh, artist conception of Aries and Pluto. So this is the actual picture of Pluto. Uh, Pluto actually is paired with Charon. This is actually a binary system. Uh, so Charon, this is actually the actual picture of Charon. This is Make Make, Artist Conception, and Haumea. Okay, so two of the largest members of the Kuiper Belt have been cited are Aries, whose, helio, whose heliocentric distance vary greatly. They actually vary from about 38 astronomical units to about 100 astro 97 astronomical units, while Pluto, whose heliocentric distance vary from 29 to 50 astronomical units. As you saw earlier, uh, the orbit of Pluto is very eccentric. So that means the semi-major axis and the semi-minor axis are quite different from each other. Okay, these uh, minor planets, Aries and Pluto, have radius of about 100 kilo, uh, 1,000 kilometers. Um, Pluto, is known to possess an atmosphere. And numerous members of the Kuiper Belt have been catalog cataloged already. But the census of these distant objects are still incomplete, even at large sizes. So that means there are much to be discovered in the Kuiper Belt. Okay? Because of the distance of the Kuiper Belt from the sun, most of the Kuiper Belt uh, objects or KBOs, sometimes they call it KBOs, Kuiper Belt Objects, are icy bodies, which can become comets, comets later. Okay, just to give you a brief inventory of the objects orbiting the sun. So this figure in logarithmic scale, both in Y and horizontal axis, okay? So Y axis is diameter in logarithmic scale. Okay, and x axis is also distance, average distance from the earth. Okay, one is one earth, a uh, one uh, astronomical unit. So, if you're going to trace this number one, it will go to this uh, square, which is the earth. No, okay, so here we have uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five six, seven groups of points, okay? So let's call, let's, uh, no, no. Let's, uh, let's identify everything. Now the Jovian or giant planets, okay, in green, dominate the, the distance of the outer planets. So these are the outer planets. Because this is your average distance. So this is actually outer planets. This is the inner planets. Okay. Much of the sizes, diameter, okay, is dominated by their Jovian planets. The terrestrial planets, okay, dominate the inner solar system. Okay. So this is the inner solar system. Uh, and smaller objects like the asteroid belt, Okay, this is the main asteroid belt between Mars, so this is Mars, and Jupiter. So in between these two 
are the main belt asteroids, and some uh, asteroids are considered to be near Earth. Okay, so these smaller objects like the asteroid belt, even the Jupiter Trojans. Okay, these Jupiter Trojans are asteroids that are, I don't know, sumusunod. Okay, that's why it's called true. I don't know. And they all they follow the they do not orbit, no, they do not uh, orbit the um, Jupiter too much, uh, unlike you know, unlike the the unlike the moons. But these Jupiter Trojans are, you know, uh, can be found very uh, or, or follow the orbit of uh, Jupiter. Okay. They tend to be concentrated in regions where orbits are stable and at least or at least long live no? okay. So these are the main asteroid belt and this is our your Kuiper belt and some you know stray objects. Some uh, some of them are called centaurs. Okay, so aside from this, okay. Uh, smaller objects are also known to exist. So aside from you know moons that orbit around the planets, we also have comets. So here are some of the most famous comets known, comets known, like you know like Borelli, uh, Churyumov, Gerasimenko, and one hundred uh, one p Hardy. So these are you know a close picture of comets. Comet uh, look something like this. No? So you will notice na parang mukha siyang, ano, mukha siyang chicken joy. Okay, and from Earth, we can actually see, you know, the more famous, no? yung Halley's Comet, Comet Ison, and just recently, no? few, a few months ago, no? especially during, your, during, during the lockdown, no? where Comet Neowise was, you know, was picture, pictured a lot. Okay. Uh, so this is comet Neowise. So comets are cosmic snowballs of frozen gases, rock, and dust that orbit the sun. When frozen, they are, you know, they are the small size of a small town. Very small, no? Very small. When a comet's orbit brings close to the, uh, brings it closer to the sun. So, okay, so then it heats up and spews dust and gases into a giant glowing head larger than most planets. Okay, so I think you in your plans. This is actually, uh, from here you can actually see, you know, uh, the direction of the solar wind. This is actually due to, you know, uh, solar wind, no? When solar wind passes through this comet, okay, it actually disperses this, you know, this dust and gases. Okay, just some, uh, uh, very similar to the shape of the magnetosphere that we are that I have you know sharing with you for quite some time already. Okay, so some people say that you know aside from you know sorry aside uh, or in the Kuiper belt or in the scattered disk, comets are said to be formed uh, in or near the giant planet region and are thought to have been stored in the Oort cloud. So this Oort cloud is about a uh, hundred thousand, a uh, thousand to hundreds of thousands of AU's away from the sun. So this is actually the outermost region of the known solar system. Okay, it is a nearly spherical region at heliocentric distances, as I mentioned before, of about you know a thousand. 10,000 to about 5,000, uh, sorry, uh, 50,000 to 100,000 astronomical units. Okay, so if this is you, this get, just gives us the perspective of how big the Oort cloud is compared to the orbits of the planet. Okay, uh, I, I also have, you know, uh, have something similar to that. So this is the presumed distance. So this shows the relative distance of the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Okay, so this is the inner solar system. 
And then this is the size of the solar system, inner solar system. So this is the outer solar system. So there, uh, for perspective, uh, we also see, we also uh, placed here Sedna, which is a large planetoid in the outer reaches of the solar system with distance of about 85 astronomical units from the sun, but about three times as far as Neptune, okay? So ito yung orbit. This is the orbit of Sedna and the Oort cloud would be this extent. So this is the extent of the Oort. So very, very big, huge, I don't know, outer cloud of you know particles and debris, okay? So some people say that, you know, uh, uh, when the comet survives Earth's, uh, sorry, uh, Sun's, you know, Sun's wrath, okay, as it, as, uh, when it, uh, is it, it, when the comet is its closest approach, okay, nakaligtas yung comet from the Sun, and it go, goes back to the outer reaches of the solar system, some people say, or some people presume, presume or assume that these comets are actually stored in the Oort cloud. Okay, now aside from the comets, okay, let's go back a bit and talk about the natural moons of the solar system. So this picture shows the selected moons of the solar system. Uh, the moons, uh, uh, most of the moons are found in the, I don't know, in the, in the outer, in the uh, uh, giant planets or Jovian planets with three uh, moons found on Earth, which is our own moon, and Mars, Phobos and Deimos. Okay. Some of the most interesting objects in the solar system orbit about the planet. So they, we call this our natural moons. There are seven major moons in the solar system. Of course, we have our own moon. Okay? We call these major moons of the solar system uh, by virtue of their sizes now. Okay, so aside from the moon, we also have the four Galilean satellites, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, Jupiter's Titan, and Neptune's Triton. So these are the seven major moons in the solar system. And then the rest are relatively smaller than the seven large moons. Okay? So in fact, no? Uh, they are so major that two of the planetary satellites, namely the namely Ganymede, Jupiter, and Saturn's Titan, they are actually slightly larger than Mercury. Okay, but because of their lower densities, they are less than half as massive. While the size are, while their sizes are bigger than Mercury, their densities are much smaller than Mercury. Okay. In fact, Titan's atmosphere is less denser than of the Earth. Triton, on the other hand, is by far the largest moon of, the, of Neptune, and it has an ap atmosphere that is much less dense, yet it has winds powerful enough to strongly perturb the paths of particles ejected from geysers on its surface. So imagine Triton has geysers on its surface. And even though the atmosphere is thin or much less dense, it's still part the winds it creates, it's still powerful enough to you know eject those uh, those particles ejected from the geysers on its surface. Okay, very thin atmospheres have been detected about several other planetary satellites, including the Earth's moon. Okay, so the moon has a very thin atmosphere. Even Jupiter's Io have a very thin uh, atmosphere, and even uh, Enceladus, uh, the moon, uh, moon Enceladus of Saturn. All major satellites, or natural satellites, except Triton, orbit respective of the planet in a prograde manner. So that means uh, they follow the same direction as the Earth's rotation. On the other hand, uh, and they are uh, they orbit close to the planet's equator. On the other hand, uh, okay, you it's different for uh, for Triton. No? So Triton uh, rotates opposite the direction of the planet's rotation, which is very uh, 
one of the weird things about this uh, natural satellite. Okay, of all the of all uh, of all this uh, of, uh, of all this planet and dwarf planet, okay, Earth and Pluto are are the ones that have only one moon, but relatively the moons of Pluto and the Earth are comparable to the size of the parent planets. And they say uh, that, you know, these moons were probably produced by giant impacts on the Earth and Pluto when the solar system was a small fraction of its current age. The two tiny moons travel in low inclination and low eccentricity orbits about Mars. They are called Phobos and they So they're very small, no? So we can hardly see them uh, even for, you know, orbiters or, uh, or spacecrafts orbiting around the sun. Very rare na makita ito na because they are very small to see. Okay, let's talk about Jovian rings, okay? The Jovian planets all have ring systems, okay? Which are primarily located within about 2.5 planetary radius. Of the planet center. However, these other respects, the, char the characters of the four rings, uh, characteristics of the four ring systems differ greatly. So let's start with the Sun. I uh, saw so Saturn, sorry. So Saturn is the only gas giant planet that has a prominent, easily observable ring system as they are bright and broad, full of structure such as density waves, gaps, and spokes. However, these observations are revealed that each of the Jovian planets have ring systems. Now, next would be Jupiter's ring. No? Jupiter's ring, on the other hand, is exceptionally faint. Okay, you cannot really see them close hand, so they're very faint, but uh, Hubble was able to you know, uh, image that ring. So this is the ring of uh, Jupiter. So the particles in Jupiter's ring are smaller than those in Saturn's ring, and they do not reflect light as well since it is mostly composed of smaller particles. Okay, so that's why it's not that visible. Uranus has a very peculiar, I don't know, very peculiar ring system. Okay, because uh, while uh, because of the fact that Uranus Uranus are, are orbiting sideways, okay? Uh, the, uh, its, uh, its rings are narrow, but opaque now. And they have broad regions of visibly weak dust orbiting close to the plane defined by the planet's equator, okay? So this is the ring of Neptune. The rest are some of the uh, noticeable or discovered uh, moons orbiting the, the planet. So this includes Juliet, Cressida, Bianca, Portia, Puck, Belinda, Rosalind, and Desdemonda. Lastly, okay, Neptune, because of the fact that they are so far, uh, Neptune is so far, Farther, farthest planet of the solar system. We have a, a, we. It's very hard to you know take a picture of uh, Neptune's ring, but Voyager two was able to take those. This picture. Now Neptune, as you notice, has a ring system, but not as well observed as those with the other planets. It appears to also close uh, contain dust and grain sized particles, but one peculiar is that the rings are more clumpy, you know, like this one. No? So these are clumps, okay? Unlike Saturn's ring or even Jupiter or Uranus rings, okay, wherein the rings are, are more or less uniformly distributed no? in the angular direction. Whereas for Neptune, uh, there are some noticeable clumps, no? When you say clumps, more uh, particles or more objects are found in these regions and then the other and then the other parts of the rings okay now with all these things okay let's define what a planet is 
Okay, before, during the ancient Greeks, the ancient Greeks referred to these things, uh, everything that is moving in the sky, our planet. So that includes the sun, uh, Venus, Mercury, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and even the stars. Okay, so these are all, sometimes they call this the, the planets now. Uh, so this is your geocentric model. However, this was replaced, as you already know, by the Copernican heliocentric model. So this is the original picture drawn by Copernicus, where it removed the sun and the moon as planets, but added Earth now. Okay, so you will notice that there are inscriptions here now. Okay, the, here is the translation. Okay, so the sun is the sun. And then, then this is Mercury in L, LXX. Mercury in 88 days. So that means Mercury rotates about the sun in 88 days. Venus every seven and a half months. And then the annual revolution of the Earth and the sphere of the moon. So Terra is Earth. Okay. And then uh, this one is Martis Lima Revolucio. So that's by uh, Bima pala ng Bima. So that's by, uh, by annual revolution of Mars. So this is Juice uh, 9. At uh, 12, not 12. Hindi ko masyado mabasa itong dati na ito. But the uh, translation is one revolution of Jupiter every 12 years. So this is 12. Saturn completes ano 30 years. So ano XXX, ano 30 years. Revolution, revolution, or revolution. Okay. And then in the outermost part are the immobile sphere of fixed stars. So Copernicus thought that the stars are fixed. No? And surprisingly, some people even nowadays, consider the stars are as fixed as well, no? So, unfortunately, may ganun tayo. So, anyway, uh, so, okay, uh, so later on, as the, as Uranus and Neptune were added as soon as they were discovered in the 18th and 19th centuries, respectively. Now, to give you an idea, Okay, the orbits of this you know, in a more detailed manner. So this is the orbit of you know the solar system. So uh, officially, I, I can still remember no when I was a kid no, Pluto was was still officially classified as a planet. Okay, starting from its discovery in the 1930s no, making the total number of planets then to be nine. Okay, uh, but because of you know. Because of the discovery of the Kuiper Belt, Pluto's membership as a planet become to erode. No? Okay, because they thought uh, at this part of the solar system, Kuiper Belt, there are a lot of you know, a lot of you know, objects that are similar to the to, to Pluto. No? And that's why in 2006, no, the great debates in the International Astronomical Union started. No? And they debated about whether uh, Pluto should be considered as a planet belonging to the, you know, the nine planets of the solar system. Okay, now from this, so after the debate, now they now have a official definition of what a planet is. So these are your dwarf planets and these are your planets. So from the end of the debate, a planet they define to be a celestial body that contains the following characteristic. Number one, it is in orbit around the sun. Okay, so that's check, 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 check. And even Pluto is checked. Okay. Next, it has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces that is assumes the hydrostatic equilibrium. So in other words, it has a round shape. Okay, and lastly, it has cleared the neighbor around its orbit. So this is this is where uh, Pluto failed. Okay, because of you know because of 
the presence of Pluto in the Kuiper belt. So therefore, the Kuiper belt, uh, 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 so that means Pluto's orbit doesn't clear, uh, th this planet, Pluto, Pluto uh, failed to clear its orbit now because of the presence of the Kuiper belt. Okay, so therefore, a dwarf planet is a celestial body that, number one, orbits around the sun, it has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces so that it assumes hydrostatic equilibrium, nearly round shape. And however, it has not cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. Okay, so that's why Ceres also is considered to be a dwarf planet because well, it orbits around the sun and it is sufficiently round. It hasn't cleared the neighboring the neighbor around the neighborhood around this orbit because you know uh, Ceres uh, resides or orbits within the asteroid belt. And lastly, pala, it's not a satellite. So Charon is actually a satellite of Pluto. Moon is also a satellite of Pluto. Okay, so that's why they are not called dwarf planets. Okay, now. Now that we've defined planets and dwarf planets, let's talk about planetary properties. So these are some of the these are the uh, properties of planets that we're going to talk about in this class. So orbit, mass, which which also related to distribution of mass or density, size, rotation speed, direction, shape, temperature, magnetic field, surface composition, surface structure and atmosphere okay okay questions before we proceed okay may tanong po wala sir uh yung set na po ba yung part ng solar system ano sorry sorry uh yung set na po ba is part ng solar system set na apo uh, yes, pero hindi ano pa siya, pa sa kanya parang planetoid, no? So hindi pa siya like officially part of the family kasi parang shadow pa siya ng ano no. Pero uh, it's actually debatable pa ngayon kung hanggang saan yung you know, limits of the solar system, no. So parang ano siya, parang part kasi it's it's between the Oort cloud at saka it's actually tawag sa kanya ay transneptunial body no so these are some of the more exotic I don't know, parts of the solar system uh, so some people say it's already part of the solar system but not in a conventional way to let uh, but yes yes i think it's i think it's an uh, already part of the solar system hindi lang kasi you know, hindi lang siya yung tipong traditional na okay pag kinakanta ng mga bato yung solar system hindi pa siya kasama syempre Pero scientifically, kasama pa rin. Kasama na rin siya. Then sir, uh, follow up po. Uh, possible ba na may meron pang discoverable na mga dwarf planets within our solar system? Discoverable Earth-like uh, planets pa... uh, within sa solar system? Hindi. Uh, mga dwarf planets? Dwarf planets, I think, yes. Especially in the Kuiper Belt. Kaya ang problema kasi with the Kuiper Belt, number one, that so far, and then yung dwarf planets are not luminous, uh, no, not luminous objects, no, unlike stars, no. So it's really difficult to find them directly. Uh, kasi nga, ano, no, kasi uh, mayroon siya lang makita. Okay. But I think it's possible, no. Hindi, I, I don't think, no, yung na catalog, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think yung objects in the Kuiper belt are completely cataloged, no. I think there's still much to be discovered, especially in the Kuiper Belt. Okay. Uh, not to mention, no? not to mention yung yung sa Oort cloud pa, no? Di pa natin alam masyado kung ano yung kung anong meron sa Oort cloud, no? Kasi wala, di, it's ano, it's barely observable. Uh, so uh, kasi nga hindi naman sila luminous, okay? So mga ganun. No? So I think it's possible pa rin. Mga dwarf planets, no? Or yung mga ganun ba? Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Questions po? Na na? Okay, so let's, uh, let's, ano, no? let's proceed to planetary properties. Okay, so of course you already know mass, no? Mass, 
you know, is the amount of, you know, matter that contains within the planet. And you, can, you already know that. Even distribution of mass. And even size, no? you already know the size. So it's basically the diameter or the radius of your, of your planet. Okay? But orbit, okay? Uh, again, for, uh, from your physics class and even from your introduction to astronomy, maybe the orbit of planets are, are, can be, I don't know, can be deduced or can be characterized through Kepler's laws of motion. Okay. or Kepler's laws of planetary motion, okay? Wherein this is actually three laws of Kepler's uh, planetary motion. First law states that all planets move along an elliptical path with the sun as one of its focus. So that means one of the parameters used to describe the orbit of a planet is by its elliptical properties, including you know, eccentricity and semi-major axis. Number two, all line segment connecting any given planet and the sun sweeps out area at a constant rate. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, so if this is your sun and this is your orbit, okay, by virtue of conservation of angular momentum, as, he, as the planet revolves around the sun farther from it, it will only, it, it moves slow, but as it goes closer, it moves fast, okay? That is by virtue of the second law, Kepler's law, is by virtue of conservation of angular momentum, which we're going to talk about in, a coming, in the coming days. No? We're, we're going to talk more about Kepler's laws and dynamics of the planetary motion in the coming days. Third law uh, pertains to, I don't know, to the period of, uh, to the period of revolution or the orbital period of the planet around the sun. No? And based on Kepler's law, it is directly proportional to the cube of its major, semi-major axis. Okay, so, so what does it mean? No? It means that uh, by knowing the, uh, no, no, by knowing the orbit, the periodal, uh, the orbital orbit of the planet, uh, uh, you will be able to know uh, the distance of the planet from the sun, from the orbital period. No? So that's the you know that's the magic of Kepler's laws. Okay, so from this Kepler's laws, there are several orbital elements that that is used to define the orbit of such planets no? and even some of the uh, objects around the sun no? orbiting around the sun. So this includes the following. No? We're going to look at the I don't know to look at the, some tables of uh, orbital elements. So usually it contains a semi-major axis of the planet's orbit, the eccentricity, inclination, longitude of periapse, uh, peri longitude of ascending node, and the true anomaly. By knowing these parameters, you will be able to plot or estimate or you know, predict the orbit of the sun. And in fact, this is, uh, this is uh, the exact parameters that is used to describe you know, uh, artificial satellite no? orbit. No? So, so that's why uh, we can predict no, where, when and where we can actually see uh, through the telescope or by a naked eye, you know, yung flyby na ISS, by just knowing the semi-major axis, eccentricity, inclination, longitude, uh, longitude of periapse, longitude of ascending node, and through anomaly, we can actually do that. This is also the same no, orbital elements that we use in GPS satellites and that is used to calculate the position of your GPS receivers. Okay, so this is your orbit. So basically orbit is uh, in the first approximation is described by the Kepler's law. Of course, the Kepler's law assumes that the motion of the planet is mainly due to the gravitational force exerted by the sun or gravitational pull by the sun. Of course, there are small perturbation, uh, uh, small perturbation brought about by existence of other planets. So, for example, the, the existence of the moon actually slightly affects the you know the motion of the of the Earth around the sun. So, those are some additional factors that can or can uh, can or can uh, may or may not be considered through calculations of orbits, depending on 
the kind of precision that you want in your calculations. Okay. So aside from the uh, from the aside from the planets orbiting around the sun, they also rotate about its axis. So this is just a summary of the rotational axis, the rotation of your uh, planets. Now, uh, so the rotation periods of mo uh, sorry, the simple rotation is a vector quantity. So actually, it's actually spin related to the spin angular momentum of the planet. So the obliquity or we call that obliquity or the tilt of the axis or, a, or tilt of the axis of the planetary boundary is the body is a, the angle between the spin angular momentum and its uh, orbital angular momentum. Okay. Uh, so that's it now. Uh, and, uh, and this is described by theta. So theta is your obliquity angle or the angle between the spin and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the angle between the spin of the angular momentum and the orbital angle. We're going to talk about more about this when we talk about dynamics of planetary motion. No? Okay, so uh, by the obliquity, uh, we can actually know whether the particle, whether the planet is rotating at a prograde uh, manner or not, no? or retrograde. No? So bodies with obliquity of less than 90 degrees are said to have prograde rotation and planets with obliquity of greater than 90 degrees have retrograde rotation. So from this, you will notice that, okay, the rotational periods of most objects orbiting the sun are of the order of a few hours, Jupiter, very fast, about 10 hours long, to 243 days which is the rotational period of Venus. No? Okay, so six of the eight planets rotate prograde. Okay, so that means uh, their obliquity is less than 90 degrees. So these are Mercury, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune. Okay, so they, they, they rotate uh, in the same direction as it's as it uh, orbits around the sun. Now, on the other hand, Venus rotates in a retrograde direction with obliquity of about 173 degrees. So, pabaliktad, no? Pabaliktad yung rotation niya. Okay? We are uh, uh, contrary to, the, to its direction, uh, uh, orbit direction. Okay? And then, of course, no? Uh, Uranus, its rotation is actually tilted so low, about 90 degrees, that it looks like it, it is rotating on its orbital plane. So it's like it's like the Uranus is rolling, no, rolling along its uh, orbital plane. Okay, so most planetary satellites rotate synchronously with their orbital periods as a result of planet-induced tides. Just like you know, uh, just like the moon our moon, so the Earth rotates about 24 hours a day, and and the orbit around, uh, again, no? and the moon orbits about 30 days, no? 20 days about the Earth. Next, shape. So this is a picture of Phobos, okay, uh, brought close to the side of Mars now. So you will notice the difference in shape now. Mars is round while Phobos are very small. By the way, that this is not to, this is not drawn to scale now, but this is real pictures of Mars and Phobos now. Okay, so this is Phobos. So you will notice that the shape of Phobos is highly irregular uh, compared to the, uh, the, the round shape of Mars. Now. So many different forces together determine the shape of a body. So mainly those are gravitational forces. So in fact, self-gravity tends to produce bodies a spherical shape, a minimum for gravitational potential energy. So that's why planets are, you know, huge planets or planets in general are round because uh, that shape is, uh, is a requirement to have minimum potential, uh, minimum gravitational potential energy. Okay, 
So material strength maintains shape irregularities, which may be produced by accretion. I don't know if you're familiar with accretion. Impacts or internal geological processes. Because self-gravity increases with size, therefore, larger bodies tend to be rounded. Smaller bodies tend to be irregularly shaped. Typically, bodies with mean radii of about 200 kilometers are you know, fairly round. So you know, it's, you, you, that's the usual you know, uh, sweet spot in terms of you know, mean radii in order, uh, in order for that body, for that object to be, to, be, to be round. And as I mentioned earlier, smaller objects may be quite oddly shaped because of you know, self, uh, lack of self-gravity. Okay, so, so that's it, no? Uh, next, temperature. Okay, so temperature, so when you say temperature, that's the you know, equilibrium temperature of the planet. No? So, and that can be calculated from the energy balance between solar radiation and re-radiation outward. So sometimes we call this uh, solar irradiance and uh, albedo. Right, we're going to talk more about that when we talk about you know, uh, thermodynamics of planets. Okay, because that determines you know, more or less the temperature of your planet, okay? Uh, but sometimes, so there are other sources of heat, no, for 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 planets, so. so some of uh, and this includes you know, internal heat sources. So you know, if you have a molten core inside your planet, but that contributes to the uh, internal heat source of your planet. No? So that's why planets themselves, even Earth, have their own black body. You know? say black body, it emits its own radiation. Okay. And for Earth, it's mainly due to your, I don't know, to the to the to the core, you no, know, inner and outer core, which is composed of, you know, molten, molten metal and stuff like that. Okay. And this is significant to the contribution of the energy balance of many planets. Also, there are there may be some I don't know some variations in the temperature that can be included, which in, which is in terms of the urna. We say there you know uh, uh, day in day out, night in night out. So temperature there are some variations. For example, on the Earth, for nighttime temperature is low, daytime temperature is high. So, I don't know. so if we're going to look at the uh, uh, average temperature of the Earth. Uh, the very famous average temperature of the Earth, you will notice that the general trend of the Earth's temperature is increasing, but at smaller scales of time, you will see that there is some kind of oscillation. No? You can look at that. No? And those are what we call diurnal uh, variations in temperature. Sometimes there are latitudinal, depending on how, where you are on the planet, and even seasonal, which is determined by the position of your of your planet respective uh, in the throughout the orbit, and then of course you have your greenhouse effect, which is a thermal blanket caused by the atmosphere that is more transparent to visible radiation. Okay, so that's why it's very important to uh, study uh, greenhouse effect because this is one of the main reasons why Venus is a very hot planet, no? because of the greenhouse effect, which we're going to talk about when we go to the thermodynamics of uh, planets. Okay, so aside from that, we can also uh, planets also have magnetic fields. So you uh, you already have been you know been uh, talking about magnetic field of the Earth for quite some time, but other planets also have their own magnetic field. No, so uh, we already know from our classes, right, from our lectures before, that magnetic fields are created by moving charges, even by by translating charges through currents or spinning charges. No? Uh, so if currents move through a solid medium, they decay quickly, no? unless, the, you know, unless the planet is a superconductor. So that means we cannot, the, the magnetic field created by moving charges in the planet will not be, I don't know, will not be as, I don't know, as, uh, as feasible as possible, except that if the if the temperature is reasonably high, no? okay, then you know currents can continue to move. So that's why, okay, 
Uh, that's why yung internally generated planetary magnetic fields uh, uh, can be either produced by a dynamo process, which can only operate in a fluid region of the planet, and, and or a remnant ferromagnetism, which is a result of charges that are bound to atoms to a solid block in an aligned configuration. Okay. So the common, you know, the common theory right now, or the most acceptable, acceptable theory right now is that uh, the Earth, for example, the Earth has a magnetic field because of its molten, uh, molten core, no, made up of you know, uh, metals, wherein because these molten metals or molten rocks in the core have charged particles because they are molten. So as the Earth rotates, so that rotational uh, motion of this uh, charged particle within the core is the one that produces the Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Uh, the remnant ferromagnetism is not likely, no? Hindi siya masyadong, uh, it's not as, uh, no, no. It's, it's highly unlikely that the magnetic fields of planets are, I don't know, are due to remnant ferromagnetism. Why? Uh, because in addition to the fact that it is expected to decay away, no? because remember, yung, your permanent magnets are not permanent, actually. And the, the magnetic properties of your permanent magnets uh, eventually decay throughout time. No? So if the magnetic field of the Earth is caused by uh, ferromagnetism, eventually, this magnetic field will die down. Okay, and the time scale of that, you know, decay of that magnetic field will be short compared to the age of the solar system. Okay, unless, you know, unless the planet have been subjected to, you know, constant, I don't know, constant bombardment of ex external magnetic field over a longer period of time. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's highly unlikely. So right now, the commonly accepted you know, theory of uh, planetary magnetism is you know uh, the dynamo the dynamo process so that's why sometimes sometimes you uh, sometimes if a planet has been observed to have magnetic field uh, one of you know one of the inferences is that this planet must have a molten core inside it okay so you know it's a you know the, the reasoning can be done uh, can be done in, in both ways. So anyway, so that's magnetic field. Again, we're going to talk more about magnetic field of the planets in the coming in the coming weeks. Also, we're also going to talk about surface composition and structure. Okay, so the compositions of planets, asteroids, and uh, satellites show a dependence on the heliocentric dense distance, with objects closest to the sun having the largest concentration of dense material. And the smallest concentration of ISS. Uh, and uh, so, gonna know. Uh, so, this is usually what we can see on the, the surface of, of this you know, planet. So, you already know, you can all say uh, hello. Can you, can you hear me? Are you still with me? Yes, po. yes, okay, po, sir. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Just, so just, just, to break the ISO, just to break the monotony, no? So I placed one, two, three, four, five, six, no? Six pictures here. Uh, that is usually the uh, no, uh, typical view on the surface of this, uh, of this uh, objects. No? So you already know, no? number one, the first one, that's the view from the Earth, no? unless you have, you know, have other ideas, no? So this is the Earth. And of course, the second one is Edgar. Ano tao dito? Visha from ano, Edgar. Hello? Sige, si Michiko. Michiko? View to from... Ito, ito. Hello view po. From, ito. Anong view to? From the view moon from, po. From the moon. Ay, very moon good. Po. Okay, very good. Moon nga. Tama nga ba? Okay, the next would be Venus, no? Next one, ano to? Ano yung next one? 
Uh, sinong gusto mong hula? Uh, Paul. Next one. Ano Sir, ano ito? po? Uh, I think uh, from Mercury. Mercury. Okay, sabi ni Paul, Mercury daw. How about Nolimer? Anong dito? Ay, pala nagpa-poll ako. No? Actually, Next time. Si Sir, actually, actually, Sir, yung itong medyo color orange, medyo makapal kasi yung ano niya, atmosphere niya. Since sa Mercury is napakatin ng atmosphere niya. Okay. And then so, anong... since it is in a terrestrial, um, maybe Mars. Maybe Mars. Pero okay. I thought, sir, pero alam ko sir, itong pinakala, pero ang alam ko sir, sa pinakalas, Mars to, for sure. Ito, Hindi ko lang sure. sure sir, yung pang, yung pang apat. Pang apat? Mars po yung, ano, yung sa pinakalas. Yung huli, sabi mo Mars. No, sir. <laughs> okay, pero ito. Opo. Oh, Parang Mars, pero parang hindi. Kasi Mars na ito. Alam ka naman dalawang Mars, di ba? Okay. How about you? Uh, sino ba ba? Uh, Rook, ano sa tingin mo? Ito, tumang. Sir, sa tingin ko rin po Mars, sir. Pero yung pang yung panglima, pang Mars. Yung panglima, sa, uh, iba yung, yung panglima, Mars din. Hindi, sir. Sa pang-apat, sir, I think Mars. Uh, pero yung panglima, Um, no idea, sir. No idea. Okay. Sige. Okay, so, doon tayo sa dulo muna. No? So, itong dulo na to. Okay, saka na to. Sige. So, yung pang-apat is actually... Hi. Ano? Hello? Sino? Edgar? Yes, sir. Ano? Pang, pang-apat? Uh, di rin ako sure, sir, pero yung sa panglima, Mercury, eh, parang ano talaga, Mars. Pero siguro Mercury na lang din. Okay, na lang din. Okay, sige. Okay, good. Actually, the fourth one is Titan. <laughs> so the, the fourth one is Titan. No? This is how Titan looks like at the surface. And of course, you already know that the last one is Mars. Okay. Now, the last... The, sorry, the, the fifth one is Mars now. But the last one, ano sa tingin nyo to? Surface to ng ano? Sir, Paul? yung ano po, uh, I think yung surface po nung, yung, anibutan ko po yung name niya, yung pinunta, yung kay Rosetta. Pinuntaan mo? Yung Sir Rosetta. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi po, sir. Yung pinunta po, na, yung, uh, yung pinaganahan po ng Rosetta po. <laughs> Rosetta. Dalawa yung pinakita ko. Isang asteroid tsaka isang ano yun. Isang asteroid tsaka isang comet. Ano sa tingin mo? Uh, is a, ano po? Yung sa comet po. Comet. Okay. Other people? Okay. Iba, iba ano sa tingin niya? Anyone? Sino ba? Sino pa ba? I'm just trying to break the ice there. No? Kasi medyo naging monotonous tayo for the past few minutes. So anyway, so the last one is actually, yes, that's correct. It's uh, actually Comet 67P slash CG, uh, CG. So this is uh, you know, uh, different. Uh, what I want to, uh, no, what to, what I want to convey here is that, you know, different, you know, different, uh, different objects in the solar system have, you know, different uh, surface composition and even structure. So it depends on ano, it depends on the kind of and sometimes that's one of the things that you know uh, separates one from the other. So especially mga minor planets like yung uh, like asteroids and even comets and such. Okay, and lastly, last a property that I want to ano, to talk about, which we're going to talk more about this in the coming weeks then, is the atmosphere, no? So this is just a you know a, a summary of the you know composition and pressure of the of the of the of these planets. No? So most of the planets and some satellites are surrounded by significant atmosphere. So even Moon has an atmosphere. Even Titan has an atmosphere, as you showed earlier. So the giant planets, Saturn, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, are basically huge fluids of balls. No? So they are mostly made up of, of gases and, and fluids. No? And there are, their atmospheres are mostly composed of hydrogen. 
ano kaya percent ano comp percent composition na ah. uh, hydrogen and helium okay Venus is the is has a very dense carbon dioxide atmosphere uh, hence the ano no the the occurrence of you know a lot of global warming or green uh, uh, global warming is happening in Venus no? because of the this dense amount of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. The clouds as are, are so thick that one cannot see its surface at visible wavelengths. No? So if you if you are going to see uh, images of Venus uh, surfaces, most likely they are not coming from visible cameras, but there will there uh, most likely they will come from you know uh, radars, radar radar images, because you know because the thick the, the atmosphere of Venus is very very thick. Okay, Earth has an atmos atmosphere co uh, consisting primarily of nitrogen. So this is very unique to the uh, to the, the to the rest. No gas giants have you know, uh, dominated by helium and hydrogen. Venus and Mars are dominated by carbon dioxide, uh, but planet Earth is composed of you know large amounts of nitrogen. Okay, and oxygen as well. Okay, uh, Mercury has an atmosphere dominated by oxygen. Okay, however, uh, while uh, Mercury uh, uh, Mercury's atmosphere is dominated by oxygen and Mars is dominated by carbon dioxide. Okay, their atmospheres are thin. Okay, so by absolute values, carbon dioxide layer of, at, of Mars and even the oxygen layer of Mercury is very, very, uh, very, very faint. Very, very faint. Okay, uh, just to add now, just to add now, uh, Earth, uh, uh, sorry, uh, our moon's atmosphere uh, have, uh, have traces of noble gases such as helium and argon. So in other words, uh, the moon's atmosphere are, are mostly composed of helium and argon. Okay, so that's it. So that's an overview of the of our solar system. So this, uh, we're going to uh, learn more, uh, extend uh, our discussion, or we're going to go deeper into this, uh, some of these ideas uh, in the coming weeks now, starting two weeks from now, wherein we're going to talk about dynamics of the solar system. Okay, so what I want you to do is to look at your book, because most of the materials that we're going to do will be the, will, will come from the book that I uploaded in our Google Classroom. Okay, questions so far? Concerns? Wala na? Before I give out some assignments? Or some homeworks? Wala? Okay, siguro magkakaroon kayo ng tanong pag nagkaroon na ako ng homework. Okay. Homework number one. Okay. Uh, ano no? Uh, I presented earlier uh, the, ano no? Uh, the major categories or major uh, properties of planets, no? So for in two weeks, if we submit it through our Google Classroom, I will make a submission link later. I want you to summarize a very short summary of kite, kite, ano, kite bullet points lang, no? of the different ways to determine the properties of planets. So for, for example, how, uh, how do we, how were we able to know the composition of the atmosphere of, let's say, uh, Mars or Mercury, no? Uh, paano natin nalaman yung mga composition niya? Uh, like, or how were we able to calculate the uh, the radius of Jupiter, okay, or the orbital parameters of you know other planets. No? So we, we'll just I don't know we'll just focus on planets. No? So again, summarize the different ways to determine uh, the properties of planets. That's the first homework to be submitted in two weeks. No? Okay, questions so far? Sa homework na to? Malinaw naman, no? Anyone? Uh, sir? Yes, Paul. Sir, uh, good evening po. Si Paul po. Sir, ano po, uh, tagdan? Uh, yung summary po is, uh, yun nga, panabanggit niyo po, po, pwede po siyang bullet form or pwede po siyang uh, parang uh, paragraph uh, form din po. 
So, pwede, pwede rin po ba siyang, ah, okay po, pwede rin po siyang bawa po gamitan po ng, uh, for example, a, a, a diagram, ganun po. Pwede rin naman, okay, pwede rin naman. I, I, I just want it to be as simple as possible, no? Para hindi okay, rin masyadong, kasi ano naman, this is just uh, for me to, ano no, to help you, ano no, uh, realize or uh, to, to, ano, yeah, to realize or to be aware of how these properties are done. No? Kasi isa ito sa mga tanong sa RN before. Uh, paano nalaman yung ano no paano nalaman yung mass ng sun paano nalaman yung mass ng earth wala namang nagtimbang sa earth di ba yung mga ganung bagay na tanong uh, it it may sound stupid no pero it's actually a valid question no paano nga pala natin nalaman ng mass ng earth eh wala namang naimbentong timbangan na para makakuha ng mass ng earth so there must be other ways to do that no and i want every one of you to to ano to be aware of those kinds of you know techniques that may you no know, no maybe i don't know maybe it might be uh useful for you in the future no for example you, if you want to go to research in terms of you know in the field of planetary science no? at least medyo aware kayo ano paano ba nalalaman niyo ano let's say paano ba natin nalaman yung mass ng moon paano natin nalalaman yung mass ng jupiter or ng ibang ibang exoplanets diba or ibang mga like pluto na wala naman timbang ginagawa yung mga ganung bagay no So gusto yun na naman ang point ko dito no. Ma, 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 ano, ma, maging aware kayo dun sa mga ano, uh, different ways to measure the same thing. Okay? Okay, yun uh, at other, you, other okay, no problem. Sige. Ano pa may tanong pa? Regarding the cars this one. This is a very simple homework, no? Very short, short homework lang, no. And most of the materials here can can you can actually get from ano no? Can actually get to get from the from the book itself. Nakita niyo na ba yung book? Na-download niyo na ba? Or alam niyo lang na meron? Na ako in-upload? Yes, Rupa? Na-download na, -download na po siya. Okay, good. Sige. So, yun ha. Uh, most of the materials that I will be using will come from that book. Okay? Okay. So, that's the first homework. Now, because of, you know, the news kanina na natanggap ko na wala nga daw pasok and then asynchronous pala next week. So, this will be your homework for next week. Don't worry about yung ano no, the details of this. I will I will also uh, send this instruction sa Google Classroom. So homework number two. So as I mentioned before uh, earlier, we will have a synchronous class next week. So uh, this asynchronous class uh, uh, so that uh, will be done through lecture materials or lecture videos provided through this playlist no, that I showed you. So this place list contains uh, some, I don't know, some, some lecture videos that are, you know, that are, uh, that are, uh, that will be useful for you to be to have more information about our subject. No? Okay, and in connection to this, so uh, we will have our first quiz that will be given next week as well. No, okay, so. Uh, usually ngayon, because of the because of the current setup that we have usually quizzes will be offered or will be open for several days now so uh, quizzes will be self paced so i just trust everyone that you will going to you know uh, conduct it or take the quiz uh, uh, with honor no so honor code na lang tayo ngayon na. okay so next week we provide kayo yung quiz first quiz natin so The content of the quiz will include uh, today's lecture and the, the, the materials or the content that will be delivered through this playlist. Okay? And then we will all return to class on October 24. Okay? Questions po with uh, homework number two. Ita nang po. Tanong pa. May tanong. Walang tanong. Sir, i-upload niyo po yung presentation niyo po. This one? Sa yes, I will upload. Yeah, I, I will upload this one. Including the uh, including this okay. recording, no? Including this recording. Okay po. Thank okay, you po. Tanong pa. Nan po. Okay, sige. I will stop, I don't know, uh, I will stop recording now.